Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part two of the Totally Objective Specialty Tier List. Now, if you haven't already, you first need to watch part one for this to really make sense. We're gonna be picking up where we left off there, taking the same tier list and adding to that, doing the other specialties we didn't have time for in that first video. But first, I wanna clear up some misconceptions from that first video. A lot of viewers were saying that this was satire or joking or like, haha, so funny, or that my, when I wear a beanie, it indicates that I'm some alter ego that's less serious. Look, that's all nonsense. I am Antarctican, and if there's anything that my Antarctican parents have taught me, it's that joking is not allowed. There is never time for joking because in the Antarctican harsh environments, you don't know if you're gonna survive the next day or let alone the next hour, right? So making jokes and wasting time and not you know, directly communicating as effectively and efficiently as possible is just out of the question. So with that out of the way, let's dive into the internet's most objective and definitive medical specialties tier list. All right, just like last time, let's get the most obvious one out of the way. Rocket surgery. Rocket surgery is clearly S tier. Now, if you guys don't know what rocket surgery is, check out this video called So You Want To Be A Rocket Surgeon on the Med School Insider channel. Most people don't know about rocket surgery and that's a good thing because the minute that I found out about rocket surgery, I realized how meaningless and pointless my existence was. And I would probably be, have been happier if I didn't know about rocket surgery to begin with. But rocket surgeons are truly cream of the crop. These are the guys that make the super high achieving mortals like Johnny Kim, the Navy SEAL doctor astronaut. They make that seem just like, amateur hour. Again, so you wanna be a rocket surgeon for more details. Now, if you can't get into rocket surgery, and look, 99.9999999% of the world's population is never gonna even have a chance of becoming a rocket surgeon, then you go to aerospace medicine. But because aerospace medicine is because, it's, it's kinda like a, uh, hey, it's a consolation prize. You couldn't get into rocket surgery, so you do aerospace medicine. That's gonna make aerospace medicine C tier. Next up is cardiothoracic surgery. I used to think cardiothoracic surgery was so cool, so badass. You're opening up the chest cavity, working on the heart, the lungs, things in the thorax, it's amazing. But here's the issue with cardiothoracic surgery. South Park actually made an episode about them because cardiothoracic surgeons, their jobs are on shaky ground. And that's why you hear a lot of them say, they took our jabs. They took our jabs. They took our jabs. They took your jabs. They took your jabs. They took your jabs. They took your jabs. They're referring to, of course, interventional cardiologists. So that's gonna put cardiothoracic surgery at D tier, unfortunately. And interventional cardiology, who are now stealing the jobs of those cardiothoracic surgeons, are B tier. Next up is... Is that REI? What, are we gonna go hiking? Who made this stuff? Why, why is there a sporting goods store on a medical specialties tier list? God. Next up is sports medicine. Now playing sports is really cool. It's fun, you get the exercise, the endorphins, the teamwork, the fun. Playing sports is awesome. Watching sports is kind of lame, unless it's Formula One. Watching Formula One is pretty cool. Bull gives you wings. Watching any other sport is kind of lame. And here's the thing, as a sports medicine doctor, do you think that you're actually playing the sports? No, you're watching the athletes who are having fun, playing the sports, then they get injured, you try to help them, right? But at the end of the day, most of them aren't Formula One drivers. It's just kind of lame. And that means that sports medicine is D tier. Next up is general surgery. If you enjoyed Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie or book, then general surgery might be a good fit because general surgery has a lot of s and And if you enjoy s and and again, who doesn't, then general surgery has you covered. The issue with general surgery though is you better be a masochist because there's a lot more masochism in it. So if you like S&M, and again, who doesn't, it seems pretty promising. The issue is that if you are a sadist, then general surgery doesn't really have anything for you because again, you're the one who is being shot on. That makes general surgery D tier. Next up is internal medicine, which has a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's uh, mental masturbation. And if you're into that, then internal medicine is really second to none. Because the life of an internal medicine doctor is you spend all day in the hospital just walking around with your computers, with your team, and you're just, it's just like constant like. Um, I believe that this antibiotic, you know, vancomycin, is going to increase the efficacy and, and treatment by a 2.6573 percentage. Uh, actually, however, this other study that came out earlier this year refutes that and suggests that an alternate therapy may actually be more efficacious. You think anyone actually enjoys that? 
This is for the- uh, But professors. Only. That makes internal medicine F tier. Next up is transplant hepatology. Transplant hepatology is a subspecialty of gastroenterology. So if you guys remember from that first episode, gastroenterology, it's all fun and games until you have poop on you. Now, if you're tired of having poop on you day in and day out, then you go to transplant hepatology because you can escape the bowels and now you're working mostly with the liver. And the thing that's really curious here is that transplant hepatology is listed, but where is transplant surgery? The people who are actually doing the surgery of transplanting livers and kidneys and whatever organs they want between patients. That's the actual, you know, the good stuff. Transplant hepatology being snowflakes out here thinking that they're more important than the actual surgeons. So you guys are gonna be D tier. Next up is interventional radiology. If you guys remember from that last video, Radiology is undoubtedly D tier, but interventional radiology has slightly more patient interaction. So therefore you hate patients and hate other people slightly less, and therefore other people also hate you slightly less. Plus, as an interventional radiologist, you get to do a little bit of procedures and that gives it a little bit more of a boost as well. So if radiology was D tier, that's gonna make interventional radiology C tier. Pain medicine. There are a lot of paths to become a pain medicine physician. One of the most common paths is being an anesthesiologist. This is if you are essentially tired of being yelled at constantly in the operating room from the surgeons as an anesthesiologist, then you can find solace in a you know pain medicine. But the issue with pain medicine, I mean, it's in the name. Dealing with pain medicine patients is, you guessed it, a pain. That makes pain medicine D tier. Radiation oncology. As we established in the first part of the medical specialties tier list, math is the ultimate panty dropper. And similar to cardiology and pulmonology, radiation oncology uses a lot of math and modeling and physics and like, God damn, that is some hot stuff. So we're making that A tier. God, is it me or is it getting kind of hot in here? Next up, gender surgery. <laughs> That's a spicy meatball. If you like controversy, then gender surgery is right for you. If you like creating new body parts and doing straight science fiction stuff that most people didn't even know was possible, gender surgery might be for you. If you wanna actually know what being a gender surgeon is like, then check out Day in the Life of a Gender Surgeon or on the Medical Insider channel, we have So You Want to Be a Gender Surgeon. And gender surgery is A tier. And finally, clinical genetics. Now, as a clinical genetics physician, you are continuing the work of our Holy Father, our Lord and Savior, Charles Darwin. And for that, your work is very much valued and cherished and we are grateful for you. However, it's not nearly as hands-on and procedure heavy as we'd like. So for that reason, B tier. All right, my friends, that concludes part two of the internet's most objective, most definitive medical specialties tier list. Now, if your specialty of interest was not covered in this part two episode, then leave a comment down below requesting your specialty and maybe we'll have time for a part three. Thank you for watching my friends, much love, and I'll see you in that next one. Oh, spicy meatloaf. <laughs>